everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle, and today we are going to do a quick, challenging vinyasa flow to help build strength in the body and relax the mind. So we'll start in Tadasana Mountain Pose with our feet hip distance apart. So start at the top of your mat. Allow your hands to rest comfortably now down by your hips, chin parallel to the floor, and just notice that distribution of weight between your left and right foot. See if you can even it out here. Notice the breath as it moves in and out through your nose. And allow all the muscles in the face to be relaxed. Now as you inhale, reach your arms out and up overhead. Extended mountain pose. And exhale, forward fold over your legs. Hands come towards the floor, maybe onto blocks. Inhale, lengthen your spine halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, and bring your hands to the floor, step your feet back to plank. So first plank of this practice, press your heels back into space and really feel a little space here between your shoulder blades. Tone up your abdominals and your legs. As you inhale, shift your weight forward, shoulders in front of your wrists, and as you exhale, bend your elbows lower all the way down with control to the belly. Inhale, point your toes. Now lift your heart into a baby cobra. Exhale, release your chest back down. Inhale, lift your chest a little higher this time, maybe high cobra. Exhale, release your chest back to the floor. And this time, inhale, lift even higher. Maybe lift your thighs and knees off the ground for upward facing dog. Exhale, curl your toes under, lift your hips high, downward facing dog. You can keep the feet hip distance apart or maybe you want to bring the feet together to touch. We're going to come into three-legged dog. As you inhale, guide your right leg up towards the ceiling, three-legged dog. Leg is straight, toes are pointed, keep reaching back with the right foot. And as you exhale, pull the knee into the chest. Use your core here, shoulders right over the wrists. Inhale, lift the leg straight up and back, three-legged dog. Exhale again, pull the knee back into chest. One more time, inhale, lift and lengthen. And exhale, pull the knee in, step forward between your hands. Come onto the fingertips, reach the crown of the head forward, lift your back heel up. Root down through the feet, and as you inhale, rise, come into lunge. So your back heel is lifted. Traditionally, the back leg is straight, but if you're feeling any compression in the lumbar spine, you can have a soft bend in the back knee that helps to reduce that compression. Keep your right knee right over the ankle and Breathe deeply. As you reach your arms up, maybe think about turning your pinkies towards each other and your thumbs back towards the back of your mat. Relax the muscles in the face. And the next time you exhale, spin your left heel down to the ground, open your arms to a T in Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. So often, this right knee will start to turn in towards the left corner of your mat. Start to press that knee back as you activate the glute medius, the top of that glute muscle. Arms will reach and extend in opposite directions. So keep your back arm just as high as your front arm. Again, relax the muscles in the face. And then bring both arms up towards the ceiling and turn your thumbs back and your pinkies forward. So palms are facing in. This will help you to feel the shoulders and hips open towards the long edge of your mat. So adjust if needed. And then grab a hold of your right wrist here. Pull up on the wrist and take a side bend to the back of your mat. This is reverse in your warrior with a bind. See if you can stay connected into your lunge so you're still bending that knee over your ankle as you lean back and breathe all the way down the right side of your body. Now inhale, straighten your front leg, keep leaning back, reverse your triangle with the bind. And as you inhale, lift up, exhale, bring your arms back to a T. Inhale, reach your right arm forward as you kick your left hip back, starting to warm up and fire up through the obliques. And exhale, move into triangle, Uttita Trikonasana. Right hand can come to the shin, maybe a block, left arm will reach up towards the ceiling. For a little more activation, you can float the right hand off the shin. That will really challenge that core a little bit more. Good. Keep leaning the torso back over the thigh. 
As you inhale, press through the feet, come all the way back up. Exhale, re-bend the knee, warrior two. Now flip the palms up. Inhale, extend your right leg, reach up, look up, palms touch at the top. Exhale, re-bend your knee, come back into Virabhadrasana two. Again, inhale, reach and extend, find length, challenge your bounds by looking up. And exhale, re-bend the knee. Do that twice more at the pace of your breath. Breath aligned movement here. Good. Now, holding this warrior two, flip the right palm up, reverse your warrior one more time. See if you can create a little more space without the bind. The left hand can come to your back leg or behind your back for more of a challenge. And as you exhale, cartwheel your hands to frame your front foot. Step your right foot back to meet your left and flow through Chaturanga Dandasana. Bend your elbows halfway. Inhale, point your toes. Let's lift up for Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift the hips. Again, you can keep your feet about hip distance apart. Or for the more traditional variation, bring your feet together to touch. As you inhale, guide your left leg up towards the ceiling, three-legged dog. Really reach through the left toes. Exhale, pull the knee into the chest, bring the shoulders over wrists and engage your core. Inhale, lift and lengthen, three-legged dog. Again, exhale, pull the knee back into the chest. One more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, pull the knee into the chest, step forward gently between your hands. Come onto the fingertips, lift your back heel up. And as you inhale, rise, reach your arms towards the ceiling. So again, I like to take a little bend in the back knee, helps me to lengthen the lower back. Choose if you'd like that or if you'd like to tone the leg up so that the leg is fully extended. You do want to create space in the lower back, so keep lifting up out of your hips. And then notice if you're creating any tension in the face. Relax that if so. As you exhale, open up warrior two. Spin the right heel down to the ground, opening your arms out to a T. And find that one line from wrist to wrist. Inhale now, flip your left palm up. Oops. Actually, reach both arms up towards the ceiling. I think we started with this. So reach both arms up, pinkies forward, thumbs face back. Press that left knee back into space. Again, notice if you need to readjust the shoulders or hips. So sometimes it even helps to place your hands on your pelvis, fingers forward. So you can kind of notice are both fingers pointing towards the long edge. And then make sure that left knee is not sickling in as you square the hips to the long edge. Good, grab a hold of the left wrist now, pull up on the wrist, lift up and out of your hips, and lean back to reverse your warrior here with the spine. Breathe all the way down the left side of your body. Good, on your next inhale, give your legs a break, straighten the left leg, keep leaning back, keep stretching through the side body. Inhale, lift up, exhale, bring your arms to a T. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Now left arm reaches forward over that left thigh. And exhale, left hand will come to the shin, a block, or maybe even the floor as you reach your right arm up. Again, if you want that challenge, float the left hand up. That's gonna really challenge through the abdominals, the obliques, and breathe. Maybe you turn your gaze up at the right hand. Good. As you inhale, press through the feet, come all the way up. Exhale, re-bend the knee, back to warrior two. From here, flip the palms up towards the ceiling. Inhale, straighten the left leg, reach up, look up, palms touch. And exhale, re-bend the knee back to warrior two. Keep going at the pace of your breath. So your breath is your guide for your movement. Breathing in and out through the nose, two more. And once you do your, your fifth one, you're gonna hold Virabhadrasana too. Inhale now, flip your left palm up, reverse your warrior. Right hand can come to the back leg lightly or behind your back for less support. Good, and then inhale, lift up and exhale. Cartwheel your hands all the way down. Lift your back heel first, step your left foot back, plank pose, shift your weight forward. Exhale, bend your elbows, Chaturanga Dandasana. 
Inhale into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, Upward Facing Dog or High Cobra. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. Good. Lift your heels. Bend your knees. Look forward. Walk or hop your feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, root to rise. Reach your arms towards the ceiling. Urdhva Hasasana. And exhale, Tadasana, hands by your side. Good. Shift the weight into your left foot. Lift your right heel up and then turn the knee out to the side. Place your heel on the left ankle, maybe a whole foot on the calf. Or you can guide your foot higher in the, into the inner thigh. Hands can be at heart center in Anjali Mudra, maybe hands to hips. Or arms up overhead is a little more challenging variation of this balance of Vrikshasana. Good, breathe here in this tree pose. Think about squeezing your left hip in as you're pressing your right foot into your ankle, calf, or inner thigh. And find a drishti here, a focal point, something that you can focus your awareness on that's not moving. If you need more of a challenge, reach your arms up and start to sway your branches side to side. That will really test the balance. Good. And when you're ready, if your arms are up, bring your hands back to heart. Right knee will come forward and release that foot back to the floor. Switch sides. Root down into your right foot. Lift your left heel. Turn the knee out. Same thing. You can stay here. Bring the foot higher or into the inner thigh. Just avoid the area of the inner knee. And again, you don't have to look at this as a progression. Sometimes it's just as harder, if not harder, to keep the foot on the floor. So just do what's right for you today. Listen to your inner guide. And then hands can come to heart. You can reach up. Do what's right for you as you squeeze that right hip in and find that balance. Maybe you sway those branches again on this side. And then bring your hands back to heart. Left knee will draw forward and release the foot to the floor. If you have some time, I would suggest coming down into a Shavasana for at least five minutes, lying on your back and extending your legs out. But for now, I hope to see you again. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.